Hey guys, we're back with the tier list. I still have Tragic and Manny with me going over our, my top five and their honorable mentions for uh, draft mode. Uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, number five, I got Caretaker. Um, being able to steal your opponent's silvers or really impactful golds, is just, or not golds, bronzes, is just going to be really, really good. Um, I'm... I'm, I'm probably always going to pick this card. I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, what do you think about this one, Tragic? Yeah. In uh, Arena, it's going to be picking high-value cards on their own, and Caretaker fits that bill. Four plus your best um, card in your opponent's graveyard. So he'll he'll often be, you know, 15, 20 points, and that's kind of what you're targeting with golds, and it's not super situational. It's something that you can always reliably get off, so any card that's kind of similar to that kind of um requirement will always be a top tier pick yeah how about you manny what do you think i think it's, it's pretty good oh like once again the ones if something offers you an option it's obviously going to complement the drafting and caretaker is one of those cards that you know you just simply got those options and they're good <laughs> if i say so myself yeah i just i think a lot of the uh the res golds are going to be really good uh, number four for me, I have, if I can find her. Oh, it's a her. Oh. It's a her. Oh. I forgot how many, how much strength Shawnee is. <laughs> She's four, four now. That's what I thought. And I'm like, where did she go? There. Okay. Shawnee. Yeah. Just, uh, I mean... Once again, it, you're pulling from your own graveyard, but you know, being able to res a silver, you're one of your good silvers out of your draft, or one of your bronzes if it's going to be a something that got removed early, or you know, having this in your hand line at round three, you're you're going to be able to go toe to toe with anybody, I think. So, Shawnee's definitely my number four pick. Um, what do you think, Manny? I think uh, I think that Shani is, is like as long as it's not the curse, she meets that factor. It's pretty much another caretaker that has a restriction kind of thing, uh, and it's on your in your own graveyard. So you know what you have on your own graveyard, right? Yeah, I I would say she's just slightly better than caretaker because your own graveyard you can control more, and you might have some synergy with like reses. There's yeah. some cards that you can get a little bit of bonus from resing things. So where Caretaker, I think the biggest benefit of that in uh, Constructed is you can mess up your opponent's strategy by taking something very important from them. Yeah. Where uh, I don't think that that part will really come into play in Constructed. I think it'll be more just the four points plus a card value more so than messing up your opponent's strategy. Where I think Shani does the exact opposite. She's four, but she, your own graveyards are your opponent's. However, you have a little bit more room for synergy with her in your deck. Yeah, she just, I mean, just being able to bring back a good silver just seems just way too good. Um, number three for me is Igni. Um, people are going to play greedy. You're, you, I mean, it's, it's just like watching people in a tournament. Yeah, if you draw this round three, that really sucks. <laughs> But uh, if you got this in your hand round one, it's it's usually going to be a good swing in your favor. Um, if something really lines up, which it's going to be kind of hard to do, um, since every since all the cards are going to be kind of random. Um, but it might happen. I mean, but if there's that one big unit that's sitting on that row, you're going to be able to take it out with Igni. So Igni's my number three. Uh, what do you think, Tragic? Um. You're not an Igni fan, huh? I'm not an Igni fan normally, and I don't know if I'd have it ranked this high, but one thing I will say that is in favor of it in Arena versus Constructed is a lot of times when you do Constructed, a lot of times you'll have your gold cards be your finisher. You, like, that'll be how you win round three in a two or three card round, right. such as Siri Nova. So a lot of times you don't have room for Igni in your deck because Igni is a round one card. And so... A lot of times you can't afford to waste your gold slots on a card in round one when you need those cards in round three. Right. However, Arena, we don't have that problem anymore. Now, Arena, you know, we I think the stream, they had like eight golds, something like that. Right. In their, uh, in their deck. So now it's not such a big deal where you need to save that gold card for the finishing round in, in the games. So I think that 
definitely boosts it in arena versus what constructed would be yeah what do you think manny are you an igni fan or are you a an anti igni I'm, I'm i'm an anti igni fan dude i just don't know i don't know i mean sure it's gonna see some play and yes so sure sometimes you cannot play around it but you're gonna try to play the best of your capabilities around that uh obviously we spoke about the situational spy spy igni right you know? So that that might actually change something. Yeah, it, it I don't know. It, it I just I'm I'm in in the back of my head. I'm always playing around Igni. Even even when I write things on paper, I'll like write a fourteen just like a little bit below the other one. <laughs> just the, the, I'm always playing around <laughs> Igni. But, and, but... and normally normally people too. That's the thing. Like if if anyone plays around anything. They play around Igni, so that's kind of the negative of the card too. Is you're not gonna get too many times where you surprise forty point Igni on two twenties that lined up on a row. Right, right. But uh, yeah, that's what I got for number three. Uh, number two, I got Gels. Um, him being able to pull a gold and a silver, and then you get to pick one, and then that same card goes right to the top of your deck. It just seems stupid good. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're you're getting a good card, and then you're getting a good future card. It just seems like if you can... I mean, yes, like all these others, a lot of these cards that are relying on pulling something else, getting this in your you know last round and you're not having any golds or silvers would obviously suck. <laughs> but uh, to me, it's just, it seems like it's going to be a really, really great card. Um, I'm probably always going to pick this card. What do you think, Tragic? I think it's good. I don't know where I'd put it in the placement. It's basically just a free extra one point gold. So you can compare it to other golds that can give you more value. Right. And I would say the negative to the card would be normally the whole gold plus silver is super good and constructed, where in Arena when you're already playing so many golds and silvers versus your bronzes, putting a silver card on top of your deck is it as good as it was in constructed anymore? Mm -hmm. Just by the nature of how your deck's built. Like, you know, there's so many golds in your deck that maybe that silver card in your deck is actually a, a negative, for example. That's true. That's very true. But, you know, I mean, one free point, that's always going to be good. So it, it's good. I don't know exactly where I put it, but maybe tier two, I would say. Tier two. How about you, Manny? Are you a. Uh... A Gels, uh, well, Gels fan. Okay, so I think that getting goals is really important, but also you have eight, you know, eight to ten. So I don't know if that is the actual best choice, you know. Uh, obviously, oh, this, I can guarantee you that it's going to save your butt from time to time, but I'm not so sure how often we'll actually do. You got to believe in the heart of the cards, Manny. You got to believe in the heart it, of the cards. And one thing I forgot to mention is... Uh... Part of the great thing about Gales in a normal deck is you only got three golds to choose from, and maybe only one or two, depending if you have some in your hand. So you can kind of guess what you're going to get from Gales, you know? Like, you yeah. can you can know that you you're getting, control you know... It. Yeah, you can Yeah, like you, can, you know you're getting a Woodland Spear, for example, so you know you can play it here. Where if you're playing eight golds and, you know, one of them's Igni and one of them is, you know, some other very situational gold, all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of scared of when to play that Gales all of a sudden. This is true. All right, you talked me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, for my uh, for my number one card though, um, it's got to be Royal Decree. Um, you're gonna be able to go through your whole deck of golds and find the one that you need. Um, once again, if you draw this in your last round and you don't have any golds, it's gonna suck. But hopefully that doesn't happen to you. Um, I just think that it, and plus it boosts it too, so it's, a, it's like a mini mini bonus, but uh, you can get, of all your golds, you could just find the one that you need and it's ready for you. Um, what do you think about this one, Tragic? I actually agree with this one. I actually, I think Rosie Kree is, if not the best gold in Arena, one of the best. And it's funny because, you know, it looks so much like Gales, and yet it's so much different. And the reason why is because um, we just said you're going to have lots of golds in your deck. So being able to actually t pick the one you want, for example, Igni, you know, dropping Royal Decree round one and playing Igni, that's way better than playing Gilles in that situation where you'll get to the random gold. Right. And mm -hmm. 
the other plus thing about Royal Decree and Arena versus Constructed is um, in, in Constructed, you know, you're basically taking one gold card out of your deck. So now you're playing with like, you're, you're basically playing with three golds. Right. Which can be a bad thing. As I said before, sometimes, you know, you need those gold cards for your finisher. So that can be very detrimental that you're actually taking a gold card out of your deck, basically. But in Arena, when you're playing eight golds, that's no longer an issue all of a sudden. And not only that, but now you have eight golds instead of three. Now all of a sudden, like you said earlier, you don't have that dead draw in round three of, oh crap, I don't want to risk drawing my last gold and having a dead Royal Decree in my hand. Because you still you got four golds in your deck. So all of a sudden, the whole mulligan problem in round three and you already played all your gold is no longer an issue with Royal Decree. So this card is very, very good, and it's, it's sneaky good. I think a lot of people think it's good, but I don't think they realize how great it is for what I just said. Right. How about you, Manny? I love it. When you told me about it, I was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. I completely agree with this, dude. This, yeah. this is legit right there. Yeah, if you, you if you draw eight golds and you have this in your hand, you've been able to pick what you want and boost in it. It's just it seems really really strong. Um, I don't I don't think there's anything that can touch it. Uh, for my um, honorable mention, I got Coral. Um, five points and being able to nuke something big. For, you know, if they got something on the board that's really huge, you could just take it out no problem and turn it to a two. I think it's pretty good. Um, what do you think of this one, Tragic? Yeah, Coral's good. Um, always having the ability to take out one key card of your opponent's set can be great. Yeah, and then they can't res it either. It's just this, you know, little G.I. Joe that's sitting in their graveyard. It, it's kind of a safety card. I, I, I think it's kind of the same category as Igni. Like, everything we just said about Igni, I think, kind of applies to Coral. Right, right. Um... What about you, Manny? A squirrel, dude. It's a redhead with a freaking fish tattoo, beautiful legs, and beautiful <laughs> artwork. What else? There is no to love. Number one, dude. Number one right there. Yeah. yeah, I had to make this premium when they had premium weekend. Is, uh, is, she, a, is she a giant, by the way? I don't I know. I don't know. I think That's a close for me. That's I think... a close for me, okay? Like, I think you're I, looking I, I, at it. You're looking at it through the eyes of somebody that's about to get turned into a jig figurine. So that's why she looks so big. She's, you're, she's getting ready to shrink you, or she already did, and you're just watching her just get huge. Yeah, because she's like, doing the, the, what she needs to do. Okay, I respect that. The, the 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 angle that the cards at, you know, where it looks like you're kind of looking up at an angle, can make the whole depth perception thing a little weird. Yeah. But yeah. It, Still makes me wonder. It's like, is she a giant? Is she fighting, you know, midgets? Is are those house are those houses really small in the background, or she, is it just, <laughs> you know? She just really hates Toy Story. She's not a Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> I always wondered that though. I just had to mention it. Yeah. Uh, what's your uh, honorable mention, Manny? Okay, so my honorable mention is Awara. And the reason why that card is my honorable mention is because, very simple, same things that uh, apply to Coral, you know, the beautiful uh, woman part, and a lot of people are going to be playing uh, Coyotel, a lot of people, because those bronzes are really good. Those bronzes are going to have value, which is going to add value to water. Yeah, I, I love the card. I, I'm, I, this was the first premium I made of the new set of, of the midwinter cards. I just thought it was amazing. Um, I, I it, you know, the like I said, Scoytel has got some really good picks, and uh, I'm, I, I wouldn't have a problem picking it. You know what I mean? It seems like a really good card. What do you think, Tragic? Could you imagine your opponent has a dragoon on the board, and then you ping it down with? <laughs> you know, say an archer or something to a five, and then you play her, then you steal it, plus you buff a card in your hand. So all of a sudden, you got all this carryover getting built up, and she, I mean, that situation, if you steal a five, she's what a 20 point value. Not right. to mention that someone could be carryover and whatnot, right? Yeah, it's she's a great card. And, um, um, and yeah, she, the green, she's solid, yeah, the green cards are going to be all over the field. So I definitely see that one coming into play. Uh, what's your pick, Tragic? Uh, honorable mention first i just want to say renew i think it's kind of in the same category as royal decree it's probably not as strong but i just wanted to mention that it's one of those cards that is way stronger in arena than it's going to be in constructed just because you're going to be playing more gold cards in round one 
Right. Yeah, I almost put it in there, and I was like, I don't know. But And then I have two cards. Uh, first one is Shoop, just because I don't want to go too much on the card because it's obvious why it's so strong, because you're going to be drafting so many different cards and bronzes in such a big pool that if Shoop comes early enough where you can pick them before you get a duplicate, then the the guard, I mean, it's the, the best gold you can get in. Yeah. I don't I don't think even Royal Decree is as good as it. I would say this is the number one card. But I think a lot of people kind of already realize that. But uh, the card I want to touch on that I think most people think of is actually Muzzle. Because we're going to see... Gold a... I called it. I called it before this video. Uh, he asked me, what, is, what card do you think is going to be his? He's like, I'm Muzzle. <laughs> Well, the card is just ridiculous. I mean, imagine the scenario. Your opponent goes first. They drop a Dragoon or a Smuggler or, you know, one of those other 7, 8, you know, KSS, a card that grows, and then you go second, you muzzle it. You know, now what do you do? You you lose. You literally just lose a game because now your opponent has a whole card on you and they're the turn two player. <laughs> so you're, you're losing on even. Like, there's no way you're getting out of that. You're going to lose on even. Right. So yeah, the, the card is just ridiculous, and you know we're not going to see these control decks that play really small. So we're not going to run into very many situations where you're like, "Oh crap, I got a muzzle, and my opponent just got a bunch of freaking, you know, yeah, yeah, or a bunch of ones, you know, like the the elf mercenaries, for example. Like you're not going to see the those kind of cards. You're going to see more value bronzes in that six, seven, eight points. So even if you can't steal, you know, your ideal target. It'll at least still be a 14, 16 point gold. Right. Yeah, I I love the card. I think it's uh it's it's definitely gonna be uh it, it's it's gonna be feared, like you said. If you if if your opening play gets muzzled, you're like you said, you're just <laughs> in you're you're it's downhill, you know, they're playing the swan song for you. Yeah. But uh yeah, definitely good pick there. Um, one thing we didn't mention either was the gold weather cards. Yeah, I was I was gonna put those in there because uh, if they don't have an answer, I mean, uh, it's yeah, uh, it's gonna be bad news. But uh, it's gonna be in that like we're talking about where you can get those little cycles of this beats this beats this beats this, beats this. So it'll kind of depend on how much weather clears people are actually running. Right. You know, right. if you run, you know, drought, and then your opponent answers with a silver mage and weather clears, you know, all of a sudden your gold card just got answered by a silver card right yeah it's it's definitely a high risk high reward if this thing if you play a long round and it st sticks the whole time it's it's going to be huge value for you but if it like you said they, they leave it on the board for one turn and they play a mage you just played one of your goals but i guess the one good thing is is like you said there's you're, you're not just going to have four gold so it, i mean you might just draw four golds but i mean you might get more of them so it's not as punishing where it's like oh well i only have three more golds now it's like you might have you know five more golds and you still have this in your hand so it's not as punishing so it seems a lot better but yeah gold weather is definitely a, a thing that uh, is going to be feared in in draft mode for yep. sure yeah you def definitely play around it <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. like we're talking about cards to play around in arena i would definitely play around gold weather yeah that's that's one of those cards where you could just straight up lose if you're not ready for it right so i always keep that in the back of your mind in the arena yep yeah but that's the the gold uh tier list we got or not really a tier list but our our favorite cards uh let me know what you guys think if you think uh, there's something we missed or there's a card you know that uh you're just gonna for sure you're gonna draft uh, let me know but uh like always guys thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time